All right, so if I go through my steps for sulfur dioxide, the first step is to figure out how many valence electrons I have in the first place. Sulfur and oxygen are in the same column, two columns over from the noble gases. So sulfur contributes six electrons. Each oxygen contributes six, but there are two of them. So this structure needs to have 18 valence electrons in it. Sulfur will be my central atom, right in the middle, bonded out to two oxygen. And we want to try single bonds first. So if I make a single bond, that's a pair of electrons here and here, and here and here. I need to add in 18 valence electrons. I've already placed four. So I start going to non-bonding pairs to try to round out the octet rule, trying to keep symmetry as I go. So I'll go five and six here, keep symmetry by putting seven and eight here, nine and 10, then 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. And I've got two more, so I'm gonna put those on the central atom as non-bonding. And then I'm done. That's 18 electrons. I can double check 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 total electrons. If I check for octet, the oxygen's good. Other oxygen is good. Sulfur is closer than it was in carbon dioxide but it's only got six. So again, whenever you run out of electrons, I can't just put 19 and 20 here. That would make it an entirely different uh, molecule. Do your polyatomic ion. I need to shift some electrons into a bonding region. Now, I can't do this symmetrically, and I also need to keep them in pairs. So the best I can do here is think about putting these in on one or the other, okay? So I'm gonna shift those in as bonding electrons. And now I'm okay with the octet rule. This oxygen still has two, four, six, eight. This one still has two, four, six, eight. The sulfur now has two, four, six, and eight. So the octet rule is followed. So if I'm drawing that structure, I would go double bond to this oxygen. It's got two non-bonding pairs that are left single bond to this oxygen, and it has three non-bonding pairs. And I don't want to forget the fact that sulfur also had a non-bonding pair up top. Okay. So that is a valid Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide. Okay, They all have an octet. I've used 18 electrons. I could have done the mirror image, right? So it is also valid to have done this with a double bond on the left and a single bond on the right. Like that, kind of like the mirror image. And so you might ask, is one more valid than the other? And neither one is more valid. And what we actually do when we have this case is you should draw the valid structures and put a double arrowhead between them. Um, these are called resonance structures. They're equivalently valid structures. Okay. So what really happens with the molecule itself is when scientists study this, and we'll talk about ways that you can actually figure out the 3D shape of a molecule and you look at this actual molecule, the two bonds are actually identical. It's not as if one is a double bond and one is a single bond. The real molecule is kind of an average between the two, okay? So by showing the resonance structures, it's not as if they flip back and forth between these two realities. It's that the actual molecule is kind of somewhere in between. This bond is kind of like a double bond, but kind of like a single bond. This one is kind of like a double bond, but also like a single bond. So there's, there's no great way to draw it 
using our regular rules. Okay. Just know that it's not as if it exists in two states. The actual thing is an average between the two. One of the main characteristics of a bond that is tied to whether it's single, double, or triple is the bond length, the distance between the atoms. Okay. And again, when this is actually measured by scientists, it's not as if one bond is, you know, a longer bond length than the other. They're the same and they're somewhat intermediate between of what you would expect for a double and a single bond. All right. Let me go ahead and stop recording.